Hello and welcome to Rapid7's Whiteboard Wednesdays. My name is Chris Kirsch. I'm the Product Marketing Manager at Rapid7 for Metasploit. Today I'd like to talk about penetration testing because it's a topic that especially people who are new to the industry have a lot of questions about. So let me walk you through what a penetration test is and what it isn't. And I want to compare and contrast a little bit with other things. So first of all, some people think a penetration test is the same as port scanning. And it's not really the same thing. So I'm going to take a little uh, analogy here. And let's assume that your network is a house. So um, port scanning would be you know, looking with some binoculars or something at all the different doors and windows, all the entry points into the house, uh, and looking which ones are open and closed. So this translates into, let's say this is a computer, uh, port 80 would be HTTPS, or sorry, HTTP. And so you can scan which ports are open, and that's port scanning. It tells you what, uh, you know, where the machine uh, accepts connections. Then the next thing is vulnerability management. And that's really like sending a home inspector over to your house with a focus on security. So this guy here comes up with a clipboard and he says, hey, you know, this uh, door here looks a little uh, old. It's a little, you know, maybe run down and so on. It would be easy to kick it in. Or the lock is a really cheap lock. You should probably change that out because it's really easy to pick. And he writes up that checklist and uh, delivers a report to you. That's vulnerability scanning. And then penetration testing is actually when you send this little ninja to your house to try to break in. So it's really looking at the network and trying to, to break into the network with whatever means necessary. It might be smashing the window. It might be using a couple of lock picks to, to pick the lock on the door that the vulnerability scanner uh, highlighted and so on. So um, that's really the difference. So why would you conduct a pen test? There are many, many different reasons for that. The first one is to prevent a data breach. Very high level goal. We all see a lot of data breaches in the headlines. So um, that's the primary goal. And that uh, helps you identify where you have weaknesses on the network. Really kind of trying the same attack methods as malicious hackers on the internet to try and break in. Then also you can test your security controls. You probably have firewalls, you have your DLP, IPS, IDS, and so on. You want to see if they're working. So um, with a penetration test, you can really simulate an attack on your network and then figure out do your controls pick that up? Uh, does your security team pick that up? Do you get you know, a phone call? You might not even want to alert your security team that you're doing a pen test. Then as you're rolling out a new system, before you put that live into production, you may want to conduct a pen test to make sure that the system is secure, that you're not exposing your data. Uh, also, what I've seen a lot is uh, using pen tests to get a baseline. So let's say you're a CISO in a new organization. Um, and you're trying to figure out, hey, where should I spend my security dollars? Where do I need to f uh, focus my, my efforts? And so doing a penetration test kind of gives you that insight. It really tells you, hey, you know, uh, we were able to breach this network with x, y, and z methods. These systems are insecure and so on. So uh, do that. And of course, one big reason for doing uh, security measures is also compliance. And if we think about PCI, PCI actually requires you to do regular pen tests. So let me move over to this part of the board. So what are the steps of a penetration test? And I think this really helps people better understand what a penetration test is and does. So uh, first of all, before you start, you need to establish a goal. So your goal may be to, say, um, uh, breach a uh, credit card database. So uh, that might be the goal of the penetration test. So the penetration tester is going to say, all right, I'm going to try and do everything I can to get to that database. So uh, once the goal is set, you want to do some reconnaissance. That means you're going to research on the internet, you know, do um, uh, lookups on like, what servers belong to the organization. You'll look up on LinkedIn, on Facebook, whatever you can find out on the, uh, about the organization uh, on the internet and everywhere else. You might also phone into the organization. Then you start the network discovery. So you're actually scanning the network. And this is essentially port scanning. Uh, you're, you're scanning uh, what servers are there, what hosts are there, what ports are they uh, open on. And then you start the actual intrusion. So you start with an exploitation. That means you're actually using little pieces of software to exploit, or, uh, yeah, to exploit vulnerabilities in the network and to take control over systems. There are also some other ways to get into the systems. For example, brute forcing. 
if people are using weak passwords or if these passwords are uh, leaked anywhere um, or if they're shared across trust zones, you, you can uh, really use brute forcing. Um, also, there is social engineering, uh, which essentially means trying to trick people into clicking on phishing emails. You know, you might leave a malicious uh, file on a USB key in the bathroom or drop it in the parking lot outside, outside the company that you're trying to pen test. And uh, that will get you control over their computer. And then in the end, once you've uh, completed these steps, then you actually have uh, control over the machine. So you can do all sorts of fun stuff. You could, uh, for example, upload, download files. You can read out password files, password hashes, and reuse those to get deeper into the network. You can take screenshots. You can even uh, switch on the little uh, webcam on the laptop and take video. You can listen to audio. Everything that you can do as a user on the machine, you can now do on that laptop or, or other computer. And then once you have access to that one machine, it might just have been a phishing email through social engineering. You have access to that one machine, you can then pivot to other machines in the network. So that basically means like you jump from one point that you uh, got into the network to the next machine, to the next machine, and so on. And then in the end, when you're done, uh, before you do your report, you need to collect some evidence. You need to prove to the people who entrusted you with a pen test that you got in. And so you collect all of the different things that I mentioned before when I said, talked about taking control, you know, like downloading files, um, uh, taking screenshots, all of these things, collecting passwords, all of these count as evidence that you got into the machine. And then you create your report, which is basically a write-up of like all the things you tried and all the things that were successful in uh, conducting that penetration test. Deliver that report, then hopefully there will be some remediation and mitigation to stop a real attacker from getting in based on the things that you found. There are also some other considerations. So if you're thinking about conducting a pen test in your organization, um, I would first about think about the scope. You know, like that's a little bit related to the goal, you know, like what do you want to test, but also what means do you want to allow people to test? So for example, a lot of organizations say, hey, I want you to attack our servers, but I don't want you to use social engineering. That's a decision you can make. It's part of your decision, so that would be part of the, the scope, for example. Or you would limit it to certain networks or network segments, uh, certain time zones, uh, sorry, certain times maybe. Then also, do you want to do an internal or an external pen test? And that essentially means, do you assume that the attacker is coming from the outside of the network, kind of attacking your company over the internet? Or are they inside the network already? It could be a malicious insider. It could also be you know, um, some consultant or somebody who's got physical access to your network, plugged in a box into the network and sniffed network traffic and so on, and uh, is going from there from inside the organization. So that's part of your, your scope and your starting decision of you know, like, what's my attack vector that I'm trying to test and protect against. Then, um, of course, you want to ta uh, test safely. So here, uh, you really should uh, Plan out your steps very carefully, uh, especially when you're testing in production networks. You want to make sure that you use only reliable exploits. And tools like Metasploit allow you to do that by ranking the exploits. So um, uh, for example, exploits are ranked you know, by reliability. Um, only you know, uh, excellent and great uh, reliability uh, should be used in production environments. And uh, so that really helps you to, to not affect production. Then also one consideration is, do you want to do the pen test in-house or do you want to outsource it? Uh, typically, uh, if you only have one pen test a year, you may want to outsource it uh, because uh, training up your internal resources may not be worth it for that time or buying the tool. Um, so in that case, you may want to go with a consultant. If you want to test more or if you want to, let's say, pre-test before you have an official audit, um, or do a regular pen test, let's say, every month, uh, so that you not only have a spot check every year, but actually an ongoing kind of um, view of the uh, network security, then you may want to do it in-house, train somebody up, uh, buy a tool, and, and run the pen tests in-house. So those are some considerations. And then also selecting your pen tester. Um, if you're choosing somebody internally or externally, you should make sure that they're well-trained 
as a penetration tester, either for an internal resource, you know, um, choose somebody, hire somebody who has already done pen testing, or if you want to use an existing in-house resource, then uh, you know, train them up, uh, look for, for a good way to get them uh, familiar with the tool and with the, with the space. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you soon.